It's the next part in the series for OpenDog version 3. This whole project is open source and the CAD and code have already been published on GitHub. All of the mechanical parts are designed to be printed in PLA, and the main motor drives, of which there are 12, are cycloidal drives which I developed over a few videos last year. Each drive has two cycloidal disks and a lot of bearings. There are three videos in my channel about building the project already which you can check out, but in this video I'm going to make some minor mechanical changes and attempt to make it walk more dynamically. The main mechanical change I'm making is to the lower legs. I talked about the inverse kinematics in part 3 of the series. This involves being able to position the foot in XYZ Cartesian coordinates and work back the maths to calculate each of the three resulting joint angles per leg to achieve the required foot position. To move the foot on a path we interpolate between the positions from point A to point B which means we basically scroll through all the positions on the way so the foot moves in a straight line. I previously used the end of the foot where it touches the ground for this calculation. My upper and lower legs are the same length from joint to joint so this actually resulted in a rather short looking lower leg. Instead, I'm now going to use the centre of the ball shape of the foot as the point for this calculation. But instead of changing the maths, I've just made the leg longer. I'd already made red feet which I'm now using since the old ones were glued onto the carbon fibre tubes that make up the lower legs. As I mentioned before the feet are silicon rubber moulded in a 3D printed mould with a 3D printed core. I've used six O-Drive brushless motor drivers on this project, each driving two motors. The O-Drive allows pre-calibration of absolute position encoders so we can just power up the motors from cold. The O-Drive knows the offset between the encoder position and the motor stator so it can drive the motor phases properly and use the encoder for precise positioning. The encoder only gives us data within 360 degrees though and I don't have any encoders on the actual joint positions. The dog has 10 to 1 reduction cycloidal drive gearboxes so that means I need to position the feet in default positions within 36 degrees so the motors and joints default to the right positions on power up. For that reason I have a stand with stirrups to rest the legs on in known default positions and I've also now redesigned these so that they fold out of the way once the legs are powered up. This allows testing of the leg motions without the stand getting in the way. At the moment the dog is walking by moving the feet to fixed positions on hard coded timers. The time it has to take a step gets longer as the step distance increases but it has no sense of balance. Ultimately, it relies on the lower gear reductions in the joints so that the motors are back drivable, and then tuning the O-Drive motor positioning parameters so that the position gain is quite low so the motors and gearboxes act a bit like a damped spring. This absorbs shock, and due to the fast motion of the joints, the whole thing kind of averages out so it can walk along. I've tried turning the gains up to stiffen the joints up a bit and then tried slowing down the motion, but this doesn't work well at all and causes a strange wobbly walk as the robot twists about the two legs that remain on the ground. This is largely down to the inherent mechanical structure of the robot because there's a large sideways offset between the foot position and the hip joint position, which means there's a lot of force on that joint. OpenDog version 2 didn't have this issue because the hip joints were directly above the foot, and it only had 5 to 1 reductions. These were belt reductions though, so there wasn't any easy space to fit larger pulleys or a two-stage reduction to get to 10 to 1. It's possible OpenDog version 3 could be restructured by offsetting the joints out further via additional belt drives, but for now we're stuck with moving faster so there's not as much time for any twist before the next step occurs. But what about going over obstacles, like this 12mm piece of plywood? Well, on the surface it seems okay as long as only one foot goes on there at a time, it looks pretty stable and it can step over okay just using that natural spring in the legs to go over it like shock absorbers and suspension springs. But let's try making it higher and see what happens now. Well apart from it pushing it over and it slipping all over the place again it seems to handle it okay with the natural spring in the legs. So I'm pretty happy with how that's worked out. But as I continue testing, you can see it's not all plain sailing. The top of the dog is quite top heavy, and so you can see that it actually reels around a bit like it's drunk when it goes over only the smallest obstacles. So although it doesn't tip completely over, it's not very satisfactory. So sometimes, depending on how you hit the obstacle, it's not too bad. If you can get one foot up for some time, then it kind of averages out the motion and it's not too bad. But sometimes when it steps on and off from one foot and then another foot, then it reels around drunk again and it looks absolutely terrible. So we probably need to do something to try and correct this and make the robot more dynamic. 
The robot's had an inertial measurement unit fitted in it for some time. It's an MPU 6050 and it's fitted into the electronics box, which is where everything else is for the robot. I'm reading the data for two axes so we can see the blue line there swinging about zero and that's the pitch data which is when I tip the robot end to end. We've also got the roll data which again swings positive and negative around zero as I move the robot side to side. It's actually quite sensitive so even if I shake the robot we can see both the axes moving there so we should be able to use this data to try and help stabilise the robot and make it more dynamic. The first thing I've done is made the translation axis respond to the inertial measurement unit in pitch and roll. So as I tilt the robot, the legs move in the direction that the robot is moving so that it basically keeps its weight above the legs. So if you imagine it going up a hill, what it really needs to do is kind of lean into the hill and put its legs behind it and if it's coming down a hill, it needs its legs in front of it. And that's why the legs move in that direction as I tilt the robot in pitch and roll. The problem with this kind of positive reinforcement reaction is that of course we get oscillations. So if I shove the robot it basically wants to push its legs in front of it and that pushes it the other way and then as a result of moving the inertial measurement unit gives it some data and it goes the other way. So I've used the first order filter which is the red line, the raw data is the blue line on the graph and you can see that that's much smoother. So that's basically averaging out all the spikes and things and you can see that that damps down nicely within one to two oscillations. And it probably needs some further tuning, but we don't get that massive ongoing oscillation. And I'm just using a first order filter here, and I did a video about filtering motions for servos. These are just cheap servos driven by a cheap Arduino, and you can see that the motion's really smooth, so check that video out. But before we see how all that works, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Visual Micro. Visual Micro is an Arduino IDE for Visual Studio. It's a fully Arduino compatible IDE within Visual Studio, so you can keep the same code, libraries and board packages as in the Arduino IDE, making your project easy to share with others. Visual Micro has a unique serial debugger allowing debugging on virtually any board with a serial port, including unlimited break or trace points, performance monitoring, I.O. views and custom charting. Along with powerful code navigation and editing tools, coding has never been easier. Hardware debugging allows integration with embedded probes such as the Atmel ICE, Sega J-Link, ST-Link, ESP PROG and more, delivering runtime source level stepping and runtime variable inspection. Get the Arduino IDE for Visual Studio and start building your ideas today. Check out the link in the video description to start your free 45 day trial. So with some further tuning and some further scaling of the data, we can see we've actually got a pretty good response now. We can go over lumps and the robot doesn't reel around like it's drunk when it steps back onto the ground or steps up onto the obstacle or steps off and on the edge even if it uses multiple feet. Obviously there's going to be a point where it steps off the edge and that makes the robot fall down, but now the motion's pretty damped after one or two steps, so it's not reeling around like a drunken sailor on deck anymore. It's not perfect though, so I thought I'd build in the pitch and roll axes which are already built into the kinematic model, and that allows the body to roll in pitch and roll, basically front to back and side to side, and all of that maths is already done. So using the same inertial measurement unit data but mixing in those rotation axes in pitch and roll as well as the translation axis, we can see it's pretty stable. And I've adjusted the filters so we've got damping on both of those and also the scale so it doesn't do anything too crazy. But now it pretty convincingly walks over most obstacles and it's nothing like it was without any of this stuff when it was rolling around like it was drunk. So I'm pretty happy with the response we've got here, even though it can't pick its feet up very far, it seems to cope with most obstacles pretty well. So even though it can't step over things very well it gets there eventually, and even if it steps off an edge and then it kind of falls down a bit, you can see that it stabilises itself within one or two steps. So I'm pretty happy of how this has worked out, and I'm pretty sure it will go over most sort of terrain, even though it's never going to step over large objects like a pallet in the way or something, it will go over sort of the natural ground, and small holes and dips and lumps in the ground. So here's that clip of how it was before, just walking over one piece of wood, obviously looks completely crazy and reels from side to side as the feet step on and off. 
so I'm pretty happy of how it's worked out with those small bits of rudimentary dynamic stability. And I know everyone wants to see me kicking it, so here we go, and just with those same bits of stability, I haven't done anything else here, it seems to compensate and at least damps any motion that we'd otherwise get from it being shoved around. Bearing in mind it couldn't walk over one piece of wood before, I think this isn't too bad. The inherent natural spring in the legs helps a lot here as well, because as I push it back, it's still taking steps. The legs aren't totally rigid, so they just basically spring into position, and it just kind of absorbs the load as well as those bits of dynamic stability using the inertial measurement unit. So it's actually quite resilient even if I kick it quite hard. And I can pretty much kick it and almost push it over and it'll still recover without actually tipping over. And this is much better than any of the things I've built before basically including Open Dog 2 which sometimes just its legs killed under itself anyway when it was walking around and it would roll onto its back. I am just driving this manually at the moment with the remote which I'm holding which is just out of the top of the shot so it doesn't have any position hold or anything like that but we could use some sort of independent system to scan the room and work out where it is like one of the Intel RealSense cameras and get it to hold position as well. But it's probably time to take it for a walk on some other surfaces. So needless to say it's much more responsive on a smooth hard floor than it is on the spongy grass full of holes and twigs. I think that's probably the best that I'm going to get out of Open Dog 3. I was going to do some stuff with force control joints which I did some R&D on in the past and there is a playlist in my YouTube channel with a few videos doing those experiments but I think with this inherent offset we've got and the mechanical design it's pretty hard actually to take any advantage of force control joints that can feel the ground because basically I can't walk any more slowly anyway or balance on two legs just because the mechanics aren't there. I don't really want to build Open Dog 4. I think if I did I'd go for a higher torque reduction and probably offset this joint with a belt or have belt reductions and cycloidal drives so that that joint is directly above the leg like it was in Open Dog 2. We probably have a lot more luck there with force controlled and dynamic stability. So I have published a CAD and code for this, it isn't a beginner's project. If you want to build one, you should probably start with one leg, just get two motors and one O-drive and get your head round positioning those motors with the encoders. The code of course will still run because a kinematic model is the same for every leg, just coming out some of the lines for the other O-drives that aren't there and you'll still be able to do a test to see if you fancy spending all the money on building the whole thing. Alright, if you want to support me through Patreon and YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below, and patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all those videos up to a week early, and also sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up to be part of all that discussion. Alright, that's all for now.